Hello everybody, this video we are going to continue our discussion on object-oriented programming by reading values from a file, a text file, and creating custom objects from that data. So this is building on a lot of principles we've talked about in previous videos, so reading and writing to files, but now we're going to introduce objects to the mix. And if you've been following along with this series in Visual Studio, then I highly recommend you check out the sponsor of this video, Visual Assist. I will drop a link down below for a free trial, which will enhance your C-sharp, C, and C++ development experience inside of Visual Studio. So in our code example here, we have two food objects, one bananas and one cheese. Similar to how if we wanted to store a bunch of strings, it can get a little obnoxious having multiple variables. So you can actually create a vector or or a deck or, or an array, really any collection, you can use a custom type, in this case, food. So what we could do is, if I can just move this code down for a second so we can reference it or see it, we can say deck of type food, call it foods, and end it in a semicolon. For this, you'll want to make sure that you have imported deck. You could also use a vector if you're more familiar. And now what we can do is talk about how we could use foods inside of this deck. You can say foods dot push back or push front passing in that food object. Then instead of food dot print, what you could do is say foods index zero dot print. So this is how you could access that food object. And that's how we can keep all of our foods organized. So we could do the same thing with this food object down here. So we'll create a second index in our deck by saying foods.push back, passing in food2. And then instead of food2.print, you could say foods index 0.print. Now this doesn't really change the functionality of our code. We basically just added a new collection to make things more complicated. But in some scenarios, you're not going to have that object defined like we did here, such as when you're reading it from a file. You know, if you're going to have hundreds of food items, you're not going to have a variable for each individual one, so you'll need to reference it through the collection. But just to make sure I'm not insane, although I don't think this proves anything, let's just make sure our code shows up. This with the, oh, that's bad. We got the same value in here. So what did I do wrong? I meant to say foods one. See, I knew I was insane. There we go, that's a little bit better. Now, if we wanted to go through all of the foods and print them, you might think to use one of our print functions we defined earlier, passing in foods. However, unfortunately, this isn't going to work the way we would expect. For one, we get about six billion errors because as of right now, we don't have a way to just output our object through C out. So let me show you what I mean exactly. If we go down here and instead of passing it to print, we say C out foods and we'll say index zero. This is going to give us an error. Now you can overload this operator this is known as the insertion operator. So it is possible to make this syntax work. And in that situation, you wouldn't need to do much changing with the way we print our data. You can read about that online. We're not going to get to this quite yet, maybe in a later video. So instead what we'll do is we'll just create a custom print function that takes the custom type. So we'll say print, this will be void. And we'll just keep this specific to our example. Um, as we continue, we could make this more generic or use templates, but I think long-term the solution would be to do the overriding. But for simplicity here, what I want to do is just say for, and I'll go ahead and use the range-based for loop. So food f coming from what will be passed in, which will be a deck of type food, foods is the variable name and notice we're getting an error because of where we define this function so i'll fix that in a second but it's going to come from foods and let me go ahead and take this whole function cut that and move it below the class definition right here and now in here we can just say food dot print which is that custom method we created and if you wanted to we can call it food instead of f it might be a little clearer 
So yeah, again, just with the conventions, capital F is the type, lowercase is the variable, and lowercase but plural is the collection. So familiarize yourself with that. Now what we should be able to do is inside of main, invoke print foods, passing in foods. Let's try it out. So we're doing two prints already, so we might get some double prints here. But yeah, it seems to be working. Awesome. Now let's talk about reading and writing to files. So instead of hard coding these values here, actually we could start with these and we will write them to a file and then we can learn how to read them from that file. So we will clean up some of this. Let's get rid of these prints and this print down here. So we can print all of them once if you wish. What we'll do is we will define an output file stream file passing in some value such as foods.txt, which we currently already have in existence, but it would generate it. If not, make sure you include fstream, and we will iterate through each one of these foods. So for and food, food coming from foods, we will output to the file. What are we going to output? We'll say food.name, and then let's just do a space and then we'll do food.cost and then an end line. And then lastly, we will say file.close. All right, let's go ahead and run this. Check out foods.txt afterwards. Yeah, we can reload that and check it out. We got the food, the price, and it's one on each line. Perfect. So we could basically imagine saving our list to some file and then we might want to read that later. So how do we actually read a file well we could create uh, instead of an of stream an if stream just to focus on one of these at a time let's go ahead and comment this out but it's going to be pretty similar so you could probably just edit it or do it down here file passing in foods.txt and we'll use that looping technique i taught you in the video a few ago on reading and writing from files so we can read from the file by saying file outputting the value into a food object. So let's just create a, a temporary food object. So food temp, and then we'll say temp.name. And you can actually grab the next thing after the space with another operator here. This is the extraction operator, and we will put that in temp dot cost and then we can just add that to some collection so we can define another collection here we'll just say deck of type food saved foods and we'll just leave it like that and then we'll just say saved foods dot push back passing in the temp object of type food and then lastly afterwards what i want to do is just print all of the saved foods so print foods, passing in saved foods. Let's just make sure before we run this that we're not printing anything else. If you just wanna be 100% sure, let's just comment out all of this stuff. So we can just remove that comment now. So now this is the opening comment of our multi-line comment and then it'll go all the way down here. I'm just leaving that there for reference if you guys want to refer back to that. So now let's run this first taking a look at foods.txt we have three two things in here let's go ahead and make a third thing just to test it out so what do you guys want to add in here burgers oh sure let's go with that 62 dollars and 32 cents we will save this file and then i will go and run and there you go you can see we we're able to successfully read all that information from the file and store it in a food deck and then print each one of those food items. Hopefully that was a helpful introduction to reading and writing custom objects to files. Next up, we're going to talk about constructors and the static keyword. Two very important things when it comes to object-oriented programming, so definitely check it out. And be sure to slap the subscribe button. Thank you, I'll see you in the next one.